You don't think she's on a job. If she was on a job, she probably wouldn't seem as, we're going to use the word relaxed. <clears throat> so very easily you can go and make your way up to her. As you go to approach her, um, Ollie, can you describe the, the Huntress for us? Uh, Entre is, I mean, all a sorry look alike, right? No, she looks young. Uh, she's got ring-like patterns on her on her uh, skin, and she's wearing what for a sari are um, uh, what's the word? Fairly covering clothes, but a sari still wear mostly tight leather either way. But um, it's almost like she's she's not trying to be sensual, like other Asari on the bars uh, in this room. And actually, that's what she's doing. She's looking at them in, not surprise, just like, what are these people doing? Mm. Um, she very much appears to be waiting, uh, occasionally tapping at an Omni tool. Um, and actually, probably notices you walking up before you were about to speak as well. Okay. One of the things that I'm going to say, because the Solarians are, are very, 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 very smart. Um, and they have a, a long history with Asari as well. You can immediately pick up that this uh, Asari you're looking at here happens to be in her matron phase of life. She is young. This Asari Huntress Maid is young. Maiden. Maiden, sorry. Maiden, because maiden, matron, matriarch. So mm -hmm. um, uh, in her maiden phase, which all the ones dancing around, it's not that it's only Asari dancing, but all the Asari dancers around are also in their maiden phase. She's a little uh, unusual to be se seemingly so uh, serious uh, uh, at least uh, on a very, very casual look, uh, uh, glance, I said look, <laughs> very casual glance. She seemed to be very serious for somebody so young of the Asari. You, uh, she looks at you as you're making your last couple steps approach, noticing that you're, you're approaching her. All right. If she doesn't say anything, I will gesture to a seat next to her and ask, good evening, maiden. Mind if I join you? What is it that you're here to discuss? You look like the sort that carries missions. Business. Uh, she she sits. She was standing. She sits and, and probably with her leg like pushes out the other chair. At that point, I will take a seat. Let's get straight to business then. I've been contacted by a human to go out, find a crew, and fly out somewhere to find out what happened to an Alliance ship. She she thinks for a bit. I usually... I have not done any jobs on the behalf of humans or Alliance, but I was told by my handler to take the missions that came in today in this bar. And you are here offering me a job. So, my sword is yours. Uh, I assume that do we have spacecraft we can travel to this missing spacecraft? Transportation will be provided by the humans. I didn't know they could fly. We'll be getting a great show of that. I like how this is becoming a common theme. <laughs> oh, I didn't <laughs> That's know what I wanted to do. Fly. <laughs> she, she nods a bit and, 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 and um, fiddles with things. I noticed you were talking with this gentleman. Is he going to be on the craft too? The humans recommended him for some reason. I don't like it myself, but... Well, he might come in useful if the ship is not in good condition. The goddess gives strength in many ways. The Krogans are perhaps given more of it than many others. At least in a physical sense. Believe what you will, mate, uh, maiden. Could... The pay is going to be 500 credits, and the humans are going to throw in a little bit of a bonus. Could the two of you uh, roll me perception wisdom check? And he did say, and the humans are going to throw in a little bit of bonus. Uh, us two? Yep, perception oh, wisdom. And um, and uh, you can, of course, respond to him. I, I, I would nod, like, if the money is borderline irrelevant. Um... And I don't even inquire about the bonus. Okay. Um, so uh, he says that, like, there's something meant to be a little tantalizing. And then as he says it, uh, and you're contemplating whether or not you're going to inquire about it, decide not to, all of a sudden a uh, Batarian comes over and and uh, makes his way over and just pulls a chair out and sits down with the two of you. And he's like, hey. 
Hello. Hello. <laughs> I couldn't help but overhear the conversation that you were having. This conversation I do not believe was meant to be overheard. Doesn't change the fact that it was. You're here trying to get your hands on a vessel. I, uh, have a proposition for you. <laughs> she just immediately looks to, to, to Cattle and is like, I believe you already have a vessel. Yes, but these are humans after all. That's right. We can at least hear them, them out. Them stinking humans always getting in the way. Listen, your, uh, your job to go out and find this vessel, if you want to do that for us instead, if you don't want to work with them stinking humans and their rat creatures that run around the, the Citadel, if you want to do it for us instead, we'll make the deal a little bit better for you. Do tell. Well, all we want is uh, some data that's being saved on its computer. That's what we need. The rest of the ship, you can scrap it for all I care. We don't need anything else with it. You can keep the ship itself. I mean, Very I'm sure you're not willing to keep an actual Alliance vessel in its entirety, because, you know, that's like putting a bullseye on your back. But I'm sure that uh, you could at least sell parts of it, or whatever it is that you want to do. Anything you find on there, it's yours. We don't care about the vessel. Just a little bit of information that you can find in its uh, in its hard drives. What's it worth to you? You do the job for us, and we'll pay you 300 credits each, and you can keep all the money you're going to make off that vessel. You see cattle visibly think for a little bit. And obviously you guys know vessels, like, in their entirety when they're brand new, so on and so forth. They go for a few million, generally. It's going to be a rather small or sad ship for it to be worth less than one million dollars uh, credits. But go ahead. I'm sure I could have a poke around in there while we're there. <clears throat> so you want to fly out on our ship, or are you going to fly out on theirs? Don't worry. I'm sure you have to mull it over. Um, he, he does look across the way at the Krogan and he says, uh, because he's, he obviously saw you talking to him. He's like, and maybe you can, uh, talk to the rest of the people. I'll see you in three hours. And he, uh, and he gets up and he walks away, leaving behind like a little, uh, device sitting on the table. That's like blinking, uh, doing a little bit of blinking on the table. And uh, you guys notice it sitting there. It's a bomb. <laughs> A curious fellow. How strange to be offered two jobs in one day. And they interact in such a curious way. Almost as if, if one was smart, they could take both jobs. Perhaps a challenge given by the goddess. Business is booming in shady bars, after all. <laughs> um, after a couple of moments, uh, do me a favor, Frank. Roll me a uh, perception wisdom check. I'm looking. I'm not used to the sheet. Where is it? You click perception and then you click. Yeah, wisdom afterwards. Yep. Oh no, I'm just gonna find the perception button. Top right hand, but uh, top right hand of uh, skills. Yeah. Negative. Whatever. We're gonna roll okay. poorly. Bad. Poorly. No, it's not. I mean, it's not. Not hey, horrible. Um, so you you're drinking. You're not. You, you don't notice the the blinking light or whatever over at the bar. However, somebody else does. And um, uh, the bartender actually comes over and he comes over and he puts down uh, a bottle of like some really good looking liquor um, sitting there. It's this like strange uh, blue liquid with a slight purple swirl into it. It's very popular amongst Torians, but uh, unlike typical Torian uh, cuisine, it is something that you guys, sorry, like Torian um, foods and whatnot. It's something that other races can enjoy as well this stuff isn't cheap so he puts that bottle down right there and he takes a uh, picks up the the blinking device that was on the bar and he's like looks like it's on the house and then walks away at that point i would look at the asari and be like it would be a waste to waste such a good bottle what a strange series of transactions and events that have just occurred <laughs> 
Yes, I will join you in a drink. Perhaps if we are to travel together on this mission, then it would be best to know you well. My name is Anthrain. She sort of uh, <laughs> like offers a hand like that, like a like a lady. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna kiss it. Yeah. Does he do? Does he do that? Uh... <laughs> no, he he's been raised in good circles. He'll 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 go along with it. Good man. She puts it like this. And he's just like, yeah, Daps. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, so he takes her hand. Yep. <clears throat> My name is Sirkesh Heronon Meldenest Got Olan Cattle. However. You can just call me Cattle Olan if that's what you prefer. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick was super excited when he Googled naming conventions yeah. for Chris Lard. He was like, he's like, this is amazing. I have to waste 17 hours deciding how to properly name my character based <laughs> off my backstory. I'm so excited about this right now. <laughs> and that's not even sarcastic. He was genuinely excited about it. It was pretty <laughs> funny. Um, awesome. So, uh... Go ahead. At this point, I, I would uh, nod and keep track of it, and I would unscrew the bottle and, and pour two glasses and then uh, look at the Krogan and like, is he working with us? Assuming he doesn't run off and start a random killing spree. Well, any creature is uh, capable of that, not just Krogan's. And I would, uh, I would have the quite animatedly to. wave him over. <laughs> so, so she, super subtly. she's waving the Krogan over. In the meanwhile, one of the things that you're uh, thinking about there, Rick, is you're thinking like uh, a crew of three, including yourself, is not terrible. You know you would like a little bit more. And besides, you've actually come up with a friend recently, somebody that you, you've made contact with very recently. And, um, and they are definitely uh, somebody that you would like to be working on this job with. However, you... They're not around. You haven't seen them at all in the past couple of days. And so while she's kind of like animatedly waving down the Krogan, I imagine you're on your Omni tool very quickly trying to draft up a, a message and offer an invite to this friend of yours to, to join on with you. But again, they're just not not here at the moment. Um, and of course, your friend's name is trying to, is it Winnie? Winnie Jaron or Winnie Jer? Steve. Um, but she is, not, uh, she is not around at the moment. So... Krogan, there's a very animated wave from Rosari over in your direction. He just looks over, like, sees the Asari, then looks over his other shoulder to see who she's waving at. <laughs> and he just sees, like, nobody oh. responding. And yeah. just, like, he shrugs and just gets up, oh, I guess that's for me. Um, <laughs> he's holding another one of these fiery drinks, and he just, like, blows it out. And just moves to the table. So that's a fire hazard if you would, Yeah, you have a sensible Krogan. <laughs> so sensible. That's that's an, that's wow, well, yeah. Usually in Impressive. a sorry animatedly waving at your Krogan character, he probably assumes like, Oh sweet, I'm getting a dance or something like that. However, your Krogan <laughs> has been around for how many years? How old is he? Uh, 67. So he's been around long enough and has been in enough scraps, even though he's young enough to not have been in like countless scraps, but you know, countable scraps. Um, that scraps. he can clearly tell by the clothing that she's wearing that this is a sorry huntress. No question about that. You've certainly, you know, blasted a few holes through that armor before. Um, uh, this is somebody wow. that this is that escalated. This, this is somebody that that <laughs> knows how to handle themselves, not just some typical um, uh, maiden that goes around enjoying the galaxy, right? Uh, on mummy's dollar. So you uh, you make your way over uh, to them. Krogan approaches, guys. Go. I would have poured, poured him a drink. Glass. Yeah, yeah I, I poured him a drink. Sure. Uh, and I would be very, like, sipping it very slowly. Um, like, so it was sip and like, nah. <laughs> it's too strong. So when you uh, when they you see the bottle that they have there and they're pouring a drink for you, uh, Frank, you can actually see that this is a respectable liquor. It's one of those things where, you know, in your minds, uh, or at least in the typical Krogan's mind, the Torians are actually a noteworthy race. I mean, finding a Torian that's worth a fight is, is a little difficult, but it's easier than it is, say, finding somebody else that's worth a fight. Um, so small and bird-like. They break uh -huh. so easy. Exactly, but uh, these these uh, 
this liquor is certainly something that it's like, oh, this is actually worth drinking. This isn't just shit alcohol like humans drink or something like that. You know what I mean? So go ahead. They're pouring you one, handing it to you. Oh, he already has his own drink. Yeah. Oh, so he doesn't even take it? He's just like, I'm no, he don't even take it. Well, I, I wouldn't have offered it. I would have, like, sat it at the, the now empty chair, yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah, he, he sits down. He puts his own drink down and... I'm no, told he's, that we have to be working together. So it seems. This one, the... He just, like, looks over. They're called the, Solarians. The his name is Cadel Olan. Yes. And he, yeah, he actually goes over and touches his hand like, I will remember the rest later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just looks at her and is like, at least you try. Rick, seriously, like, send me that. I'm going to remember. <laughs> I will. I'll I will. write it the fuck down. Uh, he's going to break it down. He's going to be practicing in the mirror. Of like, Cado, oh, la, da, 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 da. Um, How else was I practicing anthony? I mean, that, that, that's how I have to practice when you, like, if I try to say something that's really fast, and I'm like, oh, how do I, how do I get this? Like, um, like, uh, what is it? Uh, this appeared as a moral dilemma, because first it was weird, they were sort to eliminate the rest of the plague, the vibrant community is true, I was vague in the house, I can't be with you. Have show me the lights. It's like, you do it slow first, that way you can get it quick, you know what I mean? But anyways, go ahead. Uh, you sit down, it appears that we're going to be working together, yes it does, go ahead. So... What about the four eyes? He was offering an alternative job. Not necessarily an alternative. He wanted something on the ship that we're going to be looking for. He well, shrugs. Well, you are in charge of this operation, so you should decide... I have not worked with Batarian nor Humanity. I know very little about them, in all honesty. Batarians are not known for legal stuff. Let's put it that way. Well, then we might certainly should not work with them. I mean... I think Crash just laughs when you say not legal stuff. It's like, <laughs> Yeah, I imagine the Krogan wouldn't be very impressed. These are humans, however. I don't really trust them either. Well, in my experience, it is rather preferable to take the path which offers less chance of incarceration. A more legitimate job helping people in need, you said? A, a, a lost ship? As opposed to selling it for scrap is would be my preference but of course i will accept your judgment there's no reason why we can't help them but if we were to say stumble upon their data accidentally while helping them surely that would not be a problem you would have to hide it from the humans is there any member of our team well versed in stealth and decryption I know how to hide myself from eyes, but and humans, if I recall, have uh, rather weak senses. I have worked with intelligence before and getting it from unwilling sources. Yes, I have also uh, received such training. Quite invigorating. Hmm. I don't want to say it's invigorating and Crack just like drinks his uh, his drink again so I was just looking at your character sheets and I realized all three of you are negative one decryption the person with decryption is Aaron <laughs> yeah the person with decryption is Aaron yeah, yeah. that's awesome <clears throat> so what you are suggesting uh, is that we work for the humans but acquire the data for the Batarian client Bit of a side job, yeah. No reason why we can't do both. We can help the humans. And we can help ourselves to a bit of extra money. She she thinks and it is not 100% on the idea, but isn't like saying no. She just sort of sits and drinks for a minute. 
and the Krogan sits. The Krogan just ha- he's just drinking. He's got long for the ride. You're the Salarian. You're the one who's doing all the talking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like meh. He's like whatever decision you like, make, hey. I have no input. I just want credits. There you go. Hey, look. If there was a space Guido, it would be the Krogan. It's like, hey, I'm just along for the ride. Hey, I ain't doing nothing illegal if I don't know it's illegal. The accent was very painful. (laughs) Hey, forget about it. Forget about it. (laughs) Look, I too am a Patriots fan. Uh, Even though I'm from Jersey. Can we stop whatever this is? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This is a Jersey Uh. accent. No, no, God, no, it's not. No, it's not. I even know it isn't. Oh, God. Oh, no, man. It's like the stereotypical Jersey Guido. When we, when we take... I hate, I hate people that talk like that. When we take our first break, Frank is going to have to go watch on YouTube a couple uh, clips from Jersey Shore just to realign his... Um, his my, uh, my Guido? His, yeah, his accent. Yes. <laughs> but um, anyways, moving on. So the... Uh... uh so you guys can more or less sit in there, and it sounds like the decision that you're coming to is is you're going to accept the job from the Alliance and fly out with the Alliance and hope that you can make the uh, the job uh, with the other ones work out. So a couple of hours pass. Um, do you guys go out and do anything? Do you want to probably clearly go out and back to wherever your stuff is? Because you're not like sitting there with a backpack full of gear. You know what I mean? Mm. But uh, you would head back to wherever your rooms are, wherever you, wherever it is you're held up, and you'd grab your stuff. Uh, maybe the Krogan actually does have all of his gear on him and he literally just sits at the bar drinking and never moves. But the other two, I imagine, have to go and get their things from wherever they are. Yeah. And then, yeah. um, I'd have, I've informed people that I did send out a message to one other person. Sure. Go ahead. You feel free to tell them. So, I have to go fetch some things soon. I did, however, before talking to you. I did send out a message to one other person who I think might be qualified to join us on this mission. Whatever you think is best, Sir Kesh uh, Hananon Maldinest Got Odin Candle. He looks sort of impressed at you. It's not quite rolling off the tongue yet, but. It would be a lot better if I had Nasari tongue. He appreciates that you're putting in the effort at least. Yeah. Um, so, uh, go ahead. Wait, whatever right. you think is best. Done. I will go, fetch my things, and we will reconvene here at the meeting time. Okay. So you go, you guys go and grab your things. The Asari and the Salarian go and grab their things. The Krogan just sits there and continues drinking a few drinks. And, uh, eventually you guys get back there. Let's say a little over two hours later, two and a half hours later, not a big deal. And when you come back, um, when you actually come back to where it is that you're going... You, um, uh, when, when you finally come back, very shortly thereafter, the Batarian makes his way over and um, walks right up to the table and doesn't sit down. He kind of like leans in, puts his hands on the table and leans in. And he's like, <clears throat> so have you decided what it is that you're going to do? Are you flying out with us? Or are you flying out with them? He says, and one of the things that you notice is that while he's there having this conversation, he's looking at the Asari and the Salarian, but he's not making eye contact with the Krogan. Do I know him from past dealings? Um, why don't you do me a yeah, favor? Do we have any idea like who this guy is? Why don't you do me a favor? Uh, no, I mean, you know, what? all of you guys roll me a connect intelligence check. Um, and then just because somebody did ask in chat, I will say aloud. Uh, Erin is going to visit her, uh, newly born, uh, nephew. I can't remember if it's niece or nephew. I'm terrible. It was a newly born, I believe, nephew, um, back home in Michigan. So she is gone for this week. That's one of the reasons why we're not playing this upcoming Friday. Um, uh, she's visiting the family. Um, she will be here next week, though. All right. So anyways, with your results of, uh, Entree, Um, you know that this guy happens to work for somebody, sorry, happens to work for the Blue Suns. It's not that you've seen him before. It's not that you know him personally. It's more of the outfit that he's wearing, uh, stands out as being, oh no, this is a member of, of the, uh, the Blue Suns. It is a newer crime organization. Who knew that? You. Oh, good. Entourage. 
Uh, fine. Uh, I would have motioned for Cattle to speak, though. We have convened and decided to go along with the humans. Let them think. Nothing oh, so you're not going to take the job from us, then? We will have a look around in their database for you. I don't think it would be very hard. These are humans, after all. So you're going to work for the humans, but pijack your way in their walls? They would be less suspicious, for sure. So you're telling me that you are taking this job, then? We are. How do I know you're not going to cross me? How do we How know, do you I know you're going to end up us? paying us? Part of the pay was for you to keep that ship. You go with the humans, you don't get to keep that ship. The Krogan just speaks up at this point <laughs> during this awkward silence. <laughs> yep. Look, we're killing two Varen with one stone here. We're getting contacts with the humans. <laughs> They'll always need jobs. We're getting contacts with you. Look, you get what you want. We get future references for that. It's business. When the Krogan starts speaking, he uh, he stands up because he was like leaning in. He like as the Krogan starts speaking, he clearly stands up. Uh, roll, roll me a perception charisma check. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> By the way, Scott, you mentioned earlier that none of us has decryption. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my stat, like my uh, words. My sheet borked because I am absolutely positive I put my decryption up to plus one instead of minus one. So oh, that's not annoying. Sure what's going on there. Uh, feel free to uh, change it. Yeah, because I thought you were the comms person, which is the decryption person. Yeah, it should yeah, be a I, one. I literally Good call. took sabotage because I had one decryption. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's literally your shtick. So, yeah, um, yeah, change that. Yeah. I was really confused for a minute. Um, okay, so way. one of the things, hold on one second. One of the things, uh, Coddle sadly doesn't uh, notice it. Um, however, it is to Entre and to Cracks. 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 I can't do it. So, so uh, and to Cracks, he clearly stands up and takes a, like a, a shuffle backwards away from the Krogan <laughs> as he starts speaking. Like It's very obvious to the two of you, even though it kind of slips past uh, Cattle's uh, senses. She, she just kind of like stifles a laugh. Actually, <laughs> um, oh, but when when Crax is like saying this, it's it doesn't sound like an original thought. It sounds like someone told him this before. <laughs> he's and just, he's just in a similar in situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um, okay, cool. Did and... you don't kill Varen with stone? Yeah, yeah no, I, I, absolutely not. Um, okay, do you guys say anything about that, or do you take any note to it beyond just like noticing it, or? What did he say? Oh, if it, it, when he walked, steps away, I laugh. Okay. I didn't notice, apparently, so, yeah. All right. There you go. So you just uh, a very obviously laugh or whatever. He doesn't seem There's to make the connection. There's a laugh and slightly covered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's and he doesn't seem to make the connection for what it is anyways. So, um, so he's like, all right, then. It'll be, we'll do it that way. If you bring us the data one way or another, then, then we have a deal. 300 credits each. Is right. that good? That sounds good. All right. I'll be here if you need to get a hold of me. Um, he's like, I I'll be here when you need me. And he hands you another uh, uh, little device. This time he actually hands it straight to um, Cattle. Uh, another device that clearly you press a button and it starts blinking. He's like, get yourself a drink at the bar when the job's done. And uh, we'll turn and walk out of the uh, uh, out of the cantina. <clears throat> so with that, uh, waiting for the human to uh, arrive to pick you guys up and bring you on your little mission thingy. Uh, with that being said, why don't we actually uh, take our first break, um, and uh, and we'll come back in about five minutes and and see where things go from here. Okay. So see you all shortly. Bye. Forget about it. <laughs>